Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm about to show you what a misfire looks like. Get it up to speed a bit here and punch it. I knew for a fact that my car was gonna misfire. It pulled timing and as you saw, it actually uh, tripped the check engine light. I don't know if you can hear it right now, but it sounds really rough. The car has a bit of a skip right now. What the car did was basically shut off one of the fuel injectors because it sensed a misfire. But if I were to come to a stop here, I'll let you guys hear what that misfire sounds like. It's kind of hard to make out in the video right now. Actually, as you saw there, it just went off. So the car actually realized that it's fine because it was just a momentary misfire. So I'm gonna try it again. Once it's actually unhappy and shuts off the fuel injector and is constantly misfiring, I will show you what it sounds like outside the car and under the hood. You about to try again? At around, let's go to 4,000 RPM. And I'm gonna come to a stop. Choppy, I know you see the exhaust pipe shaking. Can't really tell much under the hood, but I'll show you guys really quickly here. The engine's got a shake to it. And you can see the air bubbles dancing around. You can hear it. It does this to actually protect itself, funny enough. It shuts off the injector, literally so you don't break the engine. So I did it two times in a row and it's not gonna just go ahead and turn that injector back on because uh, it already misfired once and then I did it again. So now it's not gonna just go ahead and reactivate the injector. So I have a constant misfire and it's basically like a limp mode. It will allow me to drive, but if I were to pull the car over shut it off and restart it, everything would seem fine again until I punched it again. And this car has a sophisticated ECU and can sense when there's a misfire situation and it goes ahead and dials back timing and shuts off the injector and, you know, saves the motor, so to speak. But, you know, it runs awful when you're in this situation. It's drivable, but I feel like the whole car is vibrating. So it just sounds like I'm on a bumpy road or that the car is uh, running terrible but it literally shut off the injector. I know for a fact that my spark plugs are shot and that's why it can misfire whenever I wanted to. I can induce a misfire just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and replace the spark plugs uh, to a colder stage so that uh, they're more suitable for the way this car is tuned. You tend to lose quite a bit of uh, life expectancy out of the actual spark plugs when your car is tuned and I think I've used these up. They're just stock plugs. I'm gonna go to a set of NGKs. So I actually, just while moving, put the car in neutral, held the start button down for a few seconds so that it would shut off the car, and then with my foot off the brake while coasting in neutral, it will allow you to restart the car, which I did, and put it into drive without putting my foot on the brake, and smoothly went back into drive, and my misfire situation's gone, but since this happened two times in a row, the car's actually uh, stored a hard check engine light. So let's go back and scan that. All right, back home now. Let's pull the code and see which cylinder is misfiring. It may be more than one. So just using a generic OBD scanner here. Put the car into the run position, but do not start it. All right. There's two faults, three pending. So cylinder five, cylinder six. All right, so a couple things to consider. This car's tuned. It has, it's basically full bolt-on, stage two plus, running on 93 octane. It's not running on any uh, blend of ethanol. Should be making it in around the 420, 430 horsepower range on stock turbos. And when you do tune an N54 motor, they tend to burn through spark plugs relatively quickly, maybe as little as every 
15,000 miles or probably an average of 20 to 25,000 miles. And the plugs I have in there now are stock plugs. They're kind of iffy once you're running as much power as this car is running right now. One of the first things you should do when you're going full bolt on is consider changing your plugs. I'm going to quickly cover here the plugs that I've purchased and why they're going to make a difference. Forgive my crude drawing, but uh, it's going to kind of demonstrate a point here. So a couple of things to consider. Uh, if you're tuned on an N54 and you're making more power, you want to consider a colder plug. Have you ever heard that term, colder plug? It's literally referring to how far the actual plug is away from the combustion chamber. So if you're more up toward the valves, toward the head, it's considered colder. There's less chance of pre-ignition when your spark plug is a little bit further away and a hotter plug is closer. So the manufacturer is going to gear toward a plug that will balance lack of detonation but yet at the same time offer good fuel economy by making sure that all the fuel is burnt and that there's good longevity on the plug. Uh, they'll put the ideal gap so that at any given moment the car is as efficient as possible in burning the fuel that's in the combustion chamber. But when you're tuned there's a fine line between being able to burn all that fuel efficiently and detonating. If you have it so that it runs completely efficient, then that means it's going to be geared toward burning as much fuel as possible. And when your car is tuned, that could lead to fuel being burnt at the wrong time, aka detonation, misfiring, etc. So what it really comes down to is stock plugs are not really ideal for a full bolt-on car. We need to run colder plugs. So I purchased these NGK Iridiums, part number 95770. Obviously you'll need six and you'll need to gap them because they don't come with the appropriate gap from the factory. They're technically not meant for this car, but they fit. So as you can see, these plugs are going to be a little bit shorter and they're going to keep the actual spark plug tip more toward the head, not so close to the piston. If that makes sense, um, a couple things to consider. Depending on how, how much power your car is making, you can use these plugs beyond 400 and some odd horsepower, but you want to be conscious of the gap. So in my case, I'm okay with a little bit of gap. I'm going to go for 0 0.022 inches instead of uh, a tighter gap. That's an That gives you an idea of what a, a wider gap would look like and what a tighter gap would look like. So if you want less chance of the pressure in the combustion chamber blowing out the actual arc between your uh, electrode, then a tighter gap actually causes it to have less chance of that happening. As you can see here, there's a wider gap, which is good for burning as much fuel as possible and for keeping the engine efficient when you're not on it. But um, if you're running a lot of power, let's say you're single turbo making 600 plus horsepower and you're pushing 25 plus PSI, then what's going to happen is there's going to be so much pressure in the combustion chamber that you can blow out the, the arc and then it's going to misfire. So why wouldn't anybody just run it like this? Because there's less um, arc there, there's less chance and less time, less surface area of electricity to actually burn the fuel in the combustion chamber and therefore the car runs less efficient. So colder plugs are not as good for cold starts They're, you know, because you're further away from where the action's happening. And if you have a tighter gap, you have less spark to actually ignite the fuel as efficient as efficiently as possible. So it could run a little rougher when you pull your plugs, they could look a little more fouled, etc. but they're going to be geared toward handling high power being on it when you're in boost quite well. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Why would you go colder? Only if you have to, to ensure that you don't misfire under load. Why would you tighten your gap like that to avoid blowing out the actual arc? But at the same time, it's less efficient. When you're one step colder and you're running a tighter gap, it's not going to run as good cold. It's not going to be as fuel efficient, normal circumstances. But it's minor. One stage colder is not a big deal. And if you can maintain the larger gap here, you can keep things relatively efficient. It would feel pretty crisp. But just to put it all out there, um, I'm running the stock Bosch plugs and they're they're not gappable. Uh, they're the kind with the quad electrodes. They're not the ideal type of plug 
when you're running more than 400 horsepower or more than 15 PSI. I wanted to capture it on video as to what it looks like when you're experiencing a misfire on any car really, but specifically on an N54 and explain to you why going to a colder plug could actually help the situation and help the cause. So I'm going to go ahead and start changing out these spark plugs and I'll just speed up the footage just so you can see it happening. It's not really a spark plug DIY, but just to give you guys an idea. Now, because these plugs are not really meant for this car and they're not going to have the exact ideal gap given my circumstances, I have to gap them. So I'll unbox one of these really quickly here. And there's the plug itself. It's got this cardboard protector there. So I have a cheapy uh, spark plug gap tool and we're going to see where the gap is now. So it's already, it's probably at 0 .2, 0 0.28, which is not uh, ideal. It's wider than you would want given the car's tuned. So I gotta knock this down a little bit and then I can use this to, to widen up the gap and then get it gapped appropriately. So that's more toward 0.22 or right around the beginning stage, right there. So I'm gonna get these all gapped and then I'll uh, start rolling again. Now when you're gapping plugs, and if you have to tighten the gap up, be careful, it just takes a really light tap on something solid um, to actually set the gap. And you ideally don't want to use, you can use this, but if you, if you screw up, you're gonna actually chew up the electrode. So try to make it so that you get pretty close. They make other gap tools where you can kind of rock this out of the way, but this is what you're supposed to use with this. I, I, I usually just try to get it started here and wiggle it over toward where it needs to be. But just to give you an idea, just a couple light taps will start tightening the gap. You'd be surprised. This is why you got to be careful when you're putting the plug in. If you let it fall down into the head and it knocks the corner, it could actually tighten your gap. Yeah, there you go, starting to, that's pretty much spot on for me. It's going to be hard to get the camera to focus, but we're in good shape there. It's right at about 0.22, and I didn't have to really fight with it. I don't want to use this gapping thing if I don't need to. I just want to try to get it where it needs to be and verify, ideally. So I'm going to do that for the rest of these, and then I'll, I'll come back. All right, so I've got my uh, spark plugs all gapped. Gonna pop off the engine cover now. Next up, we gotta remove all the coils. No, you'll need a 12-point socket. Um, they make a specific socket tool for removing the spark plugs on an N54 because it's a little too narrow at the tip. I actually just grinded this down with a bench grinder to make it work, but you'd have to buy a special tool. Now it's going to use a magnet to extract the plugs since I've already loosened them. We'll take a quick look at these plugs. So here are the plugs. These are the stock Bosch plugs and they have a different electrode style if you can see here. They have three separate electrodes. They're a good plug when you're running stock boost and stock power, but they're not sufficient when you're running uh, a stage two plus tune. So all in all, I'm not sure if this is signs of arcing or whatnot, but when I put the new plugs in and I put the actual uh, coils back in place, I'm gonna quickly uh, just put a little bit of dielectric grease on the end of the coil so that there's no chance of any arcing happening. You know, they've, they've done their job. Uh, they're ready to be replaced now. They have probably 20,000 20, miles on them or so. So, and I just changed all my injectors to index 12. So I definitely know it's not that. So what I like to do is use a magnet to put the new plugs into place. Just as a quick tip, when you buy the proper spark plug tool, it's magnetic so you wouldn't have to deal with this. But what you can do is just use a pick tool, 
drop it down in there. Hand thread and thread the plug in. You want to feel it go all the way bottomed out before you even begin to use your ratchet. That would be normal. So we're going to tighten the actual spark plugs to 17 foot pounds. When you're initially tightening the plugs, um, you have to collapse the crush washer for a good seal. So it can feel like it's just going and going. But that's normal. All right, so we're gonna reinstall the coils now that the plugs are tightened. Just gonna put a smidgen of dielectric grease. All right, so I verified that everything is seated. We'll give it a start before we uh, put the cover back on. All right, running nice and smooth on the NGK plugs. As you can see, even though it's a cold start, it still runs pretty good um, with the colder plugs. So I'll get that cover put back into place and we'll go for another drive to ensure everything's uh, feeling good and we're not getting any misfire. It's running good now. Alright, so that fixed the issue. Uh, basically colder plugs or just replacing plugs for maintenance in general. Got rid of my misfiring issue on my N54. Um, just figured I'd bring you guys along the ride and show you what to expect if you're new to the N54 platform. You've never experienced a misfire, now you know what it looks like. So thanks for watching and good luck.